All right, I pulled the valve cover off and sure enough, there's the problem. Check it out. Even though I pulled this to kind of pull it back to get this gasket to, to line up, it's still, there was still a huge piece here that was not sealing. So that's where all the oil leak was coming from on the passenger side valve cover. So um, I'm going to get to putting a new one on. I did pick up another set of, of valve cover gaskets. So I'm just going to do the one, of course. But um, let's swing around and look at, um, at the valve train again. All right, we're looking at the valve train again. Everything still looks pretty good. What I'm gonna actually do, the valve cover gasket sealed and the oil leaks are stopping. But one of my plans is to go ahead and drain the oil. Even though this is brand new oil that I put in, I'm gonna drain it anyways, because who knows what else has been in, lingering in there for 30 years. So I will drain this oil and put some fresh oil in. And I'm probably gonna time that with putting the dipstick in. As I've mentioned before, there's no dipstick on this engine, a little frustrating. I don't know why the original owner did that. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the headers were in the way, but I don't think so. There's still, there's always a way. They make flexible um, dipstick tubes. So I don't know why they did what they did. So that's gonna be uh, on my list of things to do is get that oil dipstick put in. Um, so let's get this valve cover gasket swapped out. So one thing good about um, one thing good about using this um, high tech sealant is that if you have to pull the gasket off, it, it helps it helps um, the gasket come off too. So, um, it's a little sticky and messy, but it does help the gasket come off. So that's one cool thing about it. So I'm going to um, clean this surface off a little bit again, and then I'm going to, I'll get the new gasket put on. <laughs> reason this thing keeps pouring oil out of the valve cover so I'm gonna just keep trying to tighten it I'm sure the gasket is seated correctly all right here we go again this is the third valve cover gasket that I put on here so I'm hoping that it works this time we're definitely having a sealing issue with this passenger side valve cover gasket. I think the valve cover is a little bowed, just a little, in a couple of spots. So I think that's playing a role in it. I can just see it 
seeping already. It's just going all over the place. Three times I replaced that valve cover gasket on the passenger side and it's still leaking. So I'm able to find a, a set of rubber gaskets. It's like a it's like a hard rubber material. Phil Pro makes it. I ended up again using this uh, high tack on it because the gasket was just slipping off. Another thing that I did as well is, uh, as, as I mentioned on one of my other videos, I picked up a set of valve covers uh, that for, off of a 74 Jeep. So one thing I noticed um, when I was trying to compare why the stupid gasket kept leaking is there's not much of a surface on this chrome valve cover. And I was comparing a, a stock factory valve cover and it, it looks like there's more area. So that combined with having an actual rubber gasket uh, I think it's going to be better. So uh, I'll show you. We just put it on. I got Roy here with me and Mike. Let's take a look at everything here. So now we're we're big time roadkill garage with with mismatch um, valve covers here. I got the rusted up, beat up factory that came off a Jeep, and then I got the chrome on the other side. So this goes out to Dave Fry uh, Dave Fryberger and dulcich so we're going to get this thing started up and see if it's going to hold <laughs> you put a lot of out, I'll this guy. so i forgot to put the spark plug wires on so <laughs> okay so one eight this this is eight that's the last one yep. You can uh, feel in this. Okay, I got that. If you want to, because it's it's just not playing nice. Oh, you got to hold on. Okay. Okay, you ready? All right, let's do it. Looks like we're good so far. Let's get the camera over there. Hope so. What do you think about the middle right there? You think it's seeping out of there? I, I, well, I, I don't see anything bubbling. I think it's just burning off the residue from the floor. Got it. We won't run for a little while. This thing has got super turbo mufflers on it. Really surprised uh, at how good it sounds. Okay, so it looks like the oil leak is fixed. Now we just got to put some more water in the radiator. So it looks, it appears that that task is checked off the box. So then we could move 
to the next task. So right now I just want to put some water in the radiator. I may actually flush it out. I'm going to talk to Roy here and uh, see what his thoughts are. What do you think, Roy? Should we just fill it up or should we go ahead and... I think for right now, let's just, let's just fill it up. I got to put some water in the radiator because it's empty. Okay, but what we need to consider is the engine's been running for almost five minutes. So before we put cold water into a hot engine, we need to start it up so the water's flowing through the engine. Oh, and got the radiator. it. So it, was, it could crack a block. You know, I never, back in the old days, that was, yeah. that was a common thing if people didn't know that. I learned something new today. It's good to have friends. Old All friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's get this thing. Or we can, you're, you're all set. All set? Yep. Okay. plug wires backed itself out. I'm having a trouble getting this thing put on. I asked Mike to put it on while the motor's running, but he refused. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do this at all. Yeah, don't do it at all, by the way. Don't do as we do. <laughs> you want to get the shock of your life, try that sometime. What do you think? Uh, fire it back up here. Should we get the timing light out? What are your thoughts? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. want to do is let's say that it's eight degrees before top dead center okay? okay so if you set this to eight degrees before top dead center then when you hit it we zero we hit the zero mark on the yeah. harmonic balancer okay otherwise you leave it at zero and you if you look for the eight yeah. degree on the harmonic balancer yeah okay, okay. I, I'll or actually on the timing the timing uh, yeah yeah um, this, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. so um do we know what the timing is on this Sticker right there. So it's five degrees before top of the center. Okay, so five degrees. So there's no way that the timing the timing indicator is is uh, all dirty. You can't see. I can see where zero is. 
here was the big notch in the center. Or actually, the, the see the pointer sticking out there? Right in the center? Or on the uh, yeah, yeah. timing cover. Okay, and then the harmonic balancer is supposed to come around and... Let's go ahead and start it up and let's see if we can see what we can see. We'll set it at five and see if we can see it. Set, set it. And back in the day, the other secret trick to these, I always did this. Okay, if it calls for five, I would set it at seven or eight. Sure. And basically, we called that hammer timing. You yeah. Know, you could do that yeah. by just clocking it a little bit. Or, you know, but hammer timing is what we used to do um, because it would just give you that just that little bit more pep without detonating. Got it. Got so. it. Cool. Well, okay. let's get this thing started. See if, see if we can see it. Set it five. Uh, you want to hook the battery back up? It's hooked up. Oh, okay. Okay, okay never mind. I didn't realize who knew this. <laughs> <laughs> In most cases, at, at this point, more than likely the timing, the vacuum is going to be what we call ported vacuum, meaning that without vacuum going to it, like at idle, it's yeah. it's dead. It's at zero, okay, zero or whatever you want to call it. But <clears throat> when you accelerate, which means the port, the throttle body is opening, okay, that's when vacuum goes to vacuum advance and starts advancing the distributor. <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do is right now we'll, we'll time it like this, then we'll shut it off and get the vacuum hooked up to it, and then we'll we'll see what happens with the timing. Got it. That way we can check it and see if the timing's actually advancing. Okay. Okay. Got that, folks? All right. I'll probably confuse you more than I did anything else. Too fast, that's why I did that. Gotcha. Okay, so. Down here, tighten this up. And now, find that vacuum hose, whatever that is. Yeah, I, I did all the hoses, so if you fill around there, look around, there should be one. Oh, I, here I, it is right here. Okay. Kind of tight down there. Yeah, it is. Let's see if I can keep from getting burned. Where's the board at? It's right. It's right by the power steering pump. Oh, yeah, it's in the front. It's in the front, right down there. Yeah, pull this out just a little bit. You know what? I'll get on the creeper. Okay. Right over there, under the car. Well, there's a little wig on there. 
Yeah, you gotta be a bit of a contortionist to, <laughs> to get that. Here, I'll down to you. Okay. Right. Can you reach it from down there? Yep. Okay. Nice. Okay, it's going up. There we are. That's why I like Chevrolet because they put the distributor in the back. <laughs> okay. AMC's cool though. Running, it was only running on seven cylinders. <laughs> Again? Again. <laughs> the back, number eight, K1. Fire it up. Cool. <laughs> Still that. Still, I mean, a little too fast, that that coolant line's leaking, huh? Yep, sure is. <laughs> I can't imagine why. It's harder to rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the list. Well, we fixed the oil leak. We got we got the engine timed. We can always back off the timing just a little bit if we wanted to. You're asking Mike to turn it off, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. So now we got it idled down enough where it will shut off like it should. 
So it's probably set right back at five degrees. Okay. What? Look at that. Well, something's got to leak. Dang it. What? Water. Where's that coming out of? Feels ya. Oh, it's it's the hole. It's the hole right here. Yep, right there. Got a pinhole. Let me look at it. Tell me. Ah man, <laughs> story of my life. What the heck? <laughs> this is the story of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, it only sat in the field for about thirty years. Okay, so take that into consideration. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get the camera up close so you guys can see um, what we're dealing with here. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess back to the another trip to the auto parts store. I gotta let this thing cool down anyway. So stay tuned, my friends. All right, here we go. So we got another leak. Uh, again, story of my life. I was just telling Roy that I'm that the heater core it hasn't been leaking, but you know what? Probably because I haven't put of uh, that much water in the radiator. So I can add that to the story of what we got to deal with. So I'm gonna just bypass that uh, hose. So we're not gonna have to deal with that. Um, I don't got time for this. Um, summertime's coming. I'm just trying to get this thing going. Put a little roadkill garage. So I'm just gonna bypass those hoses there that are going into the heater core in the top corner there, um, center I should say. Where Roy's so we'll take this there. red hose Unhook it there and hook it up right there, and that'll bypass the heater core altogether. And that'll take care of our other leak, too. Yeah. <laughs> that'll take care of all of the leaks except for that one. Yeah. <laughs> that'll blow a radiator off. That'll fit perfect. Okay. I was just concerned it was not going to be enough length, so. Excellent. We get rid of all that garbage there and all together, and we're just gonna wrap that hose direct. I already got the upper radiator hose off, and I got the lower one off as well. That was fun. That sucker being baked on there for 30 years. So we're just gonna reroute this. Onto that. Do you know what that is, Roy? That that you fit that you're putting the hose in? It's that's, got a vacuum that, line on it. That's a heater control valve. Okay, so that's the heater control valve then. Okay. That regulates the water going in the heater core, right? Yes. Okay, the circulation. Yep. Done deal. Excellent. Perfect. So we got the radiator radiator hoses off. We got that hose rerouted, so we don't need to worry about the leaky heater core anymore. And uh, we're gonna run over to the parts store real quick and. Uh, get a upper and lower radiator hose.